All right, bradcooney.com. I'd like to welcome to the show from The Voice Season 20, Rain Stern. What is up, Rain? Hey, not much. Just uh, working on music and living my life. What's up with you? Man, I'm doing good, man. I was just uh, just um, reminiscing about your 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 audition, and, and uh, my mouth kind of like just dropped open. I was like, wow. And then you like hit those highs, and I was like, holy crap. It's like, you <laughs> I gotta get her on my podcast show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm honored to uh, I'm honored to come on. Well, I'm glad to have you. All right, so if if you would, um, I'm I'm and I'm certain there's certain things you can't really talk about, but as as the best you can, tell my listeners a little bit how you ended up on the show, and then we'll get to your blind audition. Totally. So, uh, I am a performing artist, and that is how I make my living. But last year, around this time, uh, when the quarantine went into effect, you know, everything, uh, you know, for live performances and, and making money like mm -hmm. that, and, and even, you know, teaching guitar lessons and all of that stuff got canceled. So I didn't really have anything to keep myself preoccupied with, really. Um, and as well as that, and even more urgently, uh, a means of, of keeping a roof over my head so you know I kind of freaked out but I am very blessed I have a loving supportive and intelligent partner who said hey what if we did a series called quarantines and so you know I went on YouTube and just said let's see what happens so people would basically commission me uh, uh, they would they would you know, ask for a cover of a song for a certain amount of money via PayPal or Venmo or something mm -hmm. of the like. They'd say, okay, do a cover of this song for a hundred bucks. And I would put what I deemed a hundred dollars worth of work mm -hmm. into doing a cover of that song. And it worked. I managed to uh, um, keep myself afloat for a few months and as a result, it, I mean, it didn't take very long. I was hashtagging all of my my episodes on Instagram, hashtag quarantines, and uh, a talent scout from NBC uh, was must have been scrolling through that hashtag on Instagram, found my page, checked me out, clicked the link in my bio, went and saw some of my YouTube videos, and emailed me and said, hey, um, I like the vibe, I like your that you're a multi-instrumentalist and of course least but not uh, last but not least you can sing so mm -hmm. uh, you know you should bring that on the show and i had always had uh you know family or um crazy happy excited you know moms and dads in the audience not just my own but other people's <laughs> yeah um, be, be really excited and be like you should try out for the voice or America's Got Talent or something mm -hmm. like that and I never really took it seriously but um, when somebody actually from you know the show reaches out to you and says hey you should try out for this you know my ears perked and oh yeah and uh, I thought to myself I have nothing else I have no excuse like I have nothing else going on right now the whole world is shut down why mm. not so I gave it a go and uh Holy heck, I made it on the show. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, man. It's a cool story, too. And I'm really glad that, you know, you, you thought outside of the box and came up with a great idea to do those totally. com commission songs. That's a great idea. Now, yeah. this is, um, I think this is like my 10th or 11th season interviewing the voice singers. And this one's different, of course. The last few were. And one of the questions I used to like to ask the contestants on the show was to talk about the marathon that it takes just to make it to the TV round. Because some people right. think, oh, you just, you know, you audition and you're on TV. That's completely not the case. So with COVID, though, so since a lot of, there's a lot of shelter in place going on, I'm not really sure how it works now. Can, can you kind of, like, tell us how that happened? Totally. Um, so I, uh, when uh, I was reached out to... Um, she was like, hey, you got to send in a few different videos. Um, we definitely love to see you playing the guitar um, or keyboard or whatever you play. 
but you know also make sure you submit one where you're not playing mm -hmm. so we can see how you do just singing and so i submitted a few different options um i submitted like a, a bluesier old school one and then kind of more of a uh newer punk rock type thing and then i did just like a straight up pop song and i because i wanted to showcase that uh i'm i'm not a one trick pony mm -hmm. um and and then you know they got back to me within like a day and they were like sweet uh let's do an interview so then there's an interview process um and that was all done virtually as well on zoom yeah and then uh and then yeah I'm, let me think so you know there's basically just like a series of of like checking you out seeing seeing if uh um you know you're you're excited to do the show and and uh, mm -hmm. you know that you're sane or <laughs> whatever <laughs> it is you know and then, yeah. um, and then um you know i'm i mean i like i like to say that i'm like i'm like the good kind of crazy you know because right. if you're if you're not the good kind of crazy then can you really say you're an artist i mean we're all all of us artists are mm. at least a little bit crazy mm -hmm. um so but uh yeah then then you know i i think that was basically that was basically it I, they didn't make me like sing for them over zoom or anything like that um, yeah it makes sense makes sense yeah. because you know you, you, when you're trying to sing over zoom with it's just like raw um yeah. plus technical difficulties because i've had many zoom zoom calls drop out on me um totally. so basically i guess what you're saying is it's it's you know before the before covid hit it was like you know they everybody would show up at different cities where they had the you know tryouts and it would yeah. just go through a filter process and they basically did the same thing only virtually instead of yeah. in person and of course they tweaked yeah. some things so pretty cool yeah. stuff pretty cool definitely i will say i will say that i do feel like there's an advantage um in some ways to both like if you if you show up to an audition where you're waiting in line um with a you know 100 other people you know there can be like nerves can get to you yeah uh, but also you know the people uh, that you're auditioning for can really feel your energy and your presence right then and there and mm. that might actually pay off for you mm -hmm. otherwise i feel like there is a way to make sure that that presence comes through on camera and my my girlfriend actually helps me film all of that stuff so nice. Uh, just a just a quick round of applause for her. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> and she, uh, she and I were like, yeah, let's do these few different uh, styles. Totally like, got dressed up for them and everything, and really went all out on the videos. Um, That's awesome. I do feel like there's also an advantage to doing it that way because then you have a lot of control over your environment. Um, I can kind of film them whatever time of day so mm -hmm. if my voice is better warmed up in the afternoon cool that's when i'm shooting that video so yeah, true. i will say in a way i honestly think that the virtual auditions helped me out because i was able to have a lot more um control over when and how i did it yep plus your girlfriend's right there supporting the whole time i mean totally yeah yeah I'm super comfortable in yeah, that element for sure all right so let's fast forward i mean obviously you, you get the call to come out there and do the blind you know the you know to actually get out there in front of the judges so t tell me yeah. about tell me about the night before the night before the blind audition like kind of paint a picture for my listeners about how if you were nervous or what was going through your mind yeah. That's, I like this question. Nobody's asked me this yet. Um, so, uh, I'm si I'm, let me, I'm going back. I'm sitting there in the hotel room. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I definitely was, uh, there's at least one point in that day where I FaceTimed my, my girlfriend, Lydia, and I think I just wanted to feel like I was with her. Yeah. But I also didn't want to use my voice. So I'm sitting there, like, with uh, FaceTiming her on my phone and then, like, messaging her on my laptop while playing guitar and just kind of trying to keep myself busy because 
I am definitely an, an anxious person and mm. I'm one of those people that I need to be doing something with my hands or I need to be like right now as I'm talking to you on the phone I'm pacing in a room and oh, I wow, just, okay. I'm definitely like my mind works better when I'm moving and it also keeps me happier and calmer to have some type of activity going on mm -hmm. um, so yeah I, I think um, I, w I would like my family was calling me and being like oh my gosh it's the night before we're so excited and happy for you and I was like yeah totally I'm not gonna talk a lot I'm trying to keep my voice uh, fresh um, but thank you because um, also that's an issue that I have had and that I'm continuing to face is uh, is that I get tonsillitis really bad and so it, it can I can seriously go from being great one day yeah. and then you know a couple weeks later be, not being able to sing very well because my whole throat is inflamed and and, and, and my emotions really affect that a lot too so mm. I try to be try to be wary of that <laughs> yeah for sure um, and uh, I, I guess the reason I'm bringing that up is because I don't I want to have transparency with uh, my audience and with your audience and have people know that um, you know I'm, I'm a person who's got things going on too and so sure. you know you got to push through that stuff um, but also take care of yourself so yep. um, yeah I, I also was uh, had a vocal coach that was really really good uh, to me and for me uh, during that time um, uh, and she and I were texting back and forth and she was like you've got this like hmm. you know let just be yourself um, and I, I, I love her dearly she's she was really cool um, yeah that, that's more or less what was going on I was just trying to act like it was a normal night <laughs> yeah and, and keep myself busy how did you sleep did you did you get any sleep um I did sleep yeah I, I think I think I had been taking um, like some some like CBD droplets to help me sleep and to keep my stress levels down a little bit so yeah. highly recommend um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah I did sleep um, but it's like having the first day of school kind of situation mm -hmm. where I, I actually woke up before my alarm went off oh yeah <laughs> and I was like oh great there's no going back to bed yeah that's it um, it's over my late. relationship with sleep is a little is a little weird because um, I get hungry without fail sometime around 3 or 4 a.m. Oh, every okay. single night and I have to eat something like without fail that's awesome <laughs> No, it sucks, dude. It sucks. <laughs> I think it's like, it, like man, I just want to sleep. When I say it's awesome, I, I didn't mean like like literally. It's just like, it's, it's, no. but, it's but it's so like predictable. Yeah, yeah, right? that, that's what I was thinking. Uh, um, all right, so then obviously they call you out. You walk out onto the stage. What what was it like? Like, because it's like dark, right? And I know this time there's no there's no people in the audience, but. But but the judges are turned, you know, their backs are to you. It's dark. Yeah. What, what's going through your head at that point? I mean, are you just all about focus and this game time now, or what, was there still oh, some nerves? Yeah. Um. Sorry if I cut you off there. I didn't no, you're good. Um, no, you're good. I I uh I I didn't even think about the lighting in the room, um, and, be, and I didn't know that it was going to be. I think that was a producer decision with me. I didn't know that it was going to be darker hmm. for me than it was for other people so um yeah i didn't i didn't like realize because you don't you're not out there watching the other auditions take place so i i went out there just being like oh it's this is just what it is you know mm -hmm. um and uh i remember walking up to onto the stage and they make a point of telling you like Hey, these these stairs are a little slippery, so like, make sure you don't fall. Oh. I just remember being like, I'm kind of wearing the bottom of my shoes don't have much tread to them, oh, so man. I'm just gonna like look at the stairs. I remember having the guitar on, and I remember kind of like turning my volume on and going chick chick like down my strings just to make sure it was, you know, the signal was working and everything because they give you a. Uh, you obviously don't want some long ugly cables on TV, so 
you know, they give you wireless. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I walk up on, on there and I look over at uh, the band members uh, and I, I look over them and I go, just kind of give them a head nod, smile at them. Well, let's just do it. kind of this like, hey, it's nice working with you no matter what happens kind of thing, you know? And, and you know what? Um, Shout out to the band real quick. The voice band are just amazing. Amazing. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. They're really, they're, I guess totally is my word today. It's not usually, but <laughs> I'll take it. What I, is what's happened in this conversation but yeah um yeah for sure they're really good um and it was really it was one of my best favorite parts of the of the whole experience um is working with them mm -hmm. and also uh like working with the people in in fashion and, and clothing because oh, i just cool. i love the creativity and i love the the fact that that is somebody's entire job is sitting there in music making arrangements for people mm -hmm. which just just because i haven't said this yet i did write that arrangement oh nice <laughs> i did arrange i did arrange that um i like i like doing arrangements because i'm a songwriter yeah and, and i do all that stuff so it was it was really fun for me um but what was it going on in my head yeah i remember kind of having that almost uh, meditative sort of empty thing happened inside of you uh, simultaneously with a lot of like like high vibration where it's like you could you could look at it as anxiety or nerves but you just instead I walked out there and I was just like hey this is it mm -hmm. let's do this I know the song um, I arranged it I've practiced it it's it's not even do or die it's just just do it like whatever the outcome is is the outcome i'm i'm going with the flow i'm riding it out we'll see what happens and i i liked what i was doing with that song and i feel like it translates if i don't feel connected to what i'm doing that also translates so mm -hmm. i'm one of those kinds of people um and i honestly think i was like more calm than uh, everybody was expecting. I mean, when I was backstage, one of the staff came up to me and he said, hey, you're weirdly calm. And I was, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, well, because I was just chilling in my chair and I wasn't like twiddling my thumbs or anything. Yeah. And um, and uh, he was like, yeah, you're like, you just seem all okay. And I was like, well, what am I going to do? Like, freak out now? I, I, I just... It's funny, right? Because when you do get nervous, it's not. It, it kind of feels like it's out of control a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but I really do think it is perspective uh, a lot of the time. I mean, if you've got something going on physically and you've got the flu, like that's out of your control. But otherwise, I mean, that stuff's in your head. So yeah, true. I, but but I, I also think somebody with your level of experience, you know, brings confidence and you know what you can do as a musician as a songwriter as an arranger um right you know and you're in i could see why some other people with less experience would be more nervous maybe um totally. but you have you know a plethora of experience and i i'm sure that 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 tied into it to why you were as calm as you were now your song you, you i'm sorry you sang the song electric feel um yeah talk about the song and why was it why, why did you pick that one to do the blind audition with so, um, I, it's funny because I'm not like the world's like biggest MGMT fan or anything like that. Um, I, but I do really like that them and I do really like that song. Um, I put together a whole list of things and, uh, tried to have variety on it as far as what I could do. I had... John Mayer song on there. I had a Jackson Five song, Blame oh. It on the Boogie on there. I had cool. a, an Incubus song on there. Um, I had yeah, I had all different kinds of things on there. Um, but I was sitting there, and and you'll start to see that uh, my relationship with my my girlfriend Lydia is a running theme in my life um, because she really is my best friend, and that we. She's kind of like a creative director, and I'm like a producer artist, and we have this relationship that's very 
um, bouncing back and forth, and we really feed off of each other in a creative sense. So uh, we're sitting there in my living room with this list of songs, and she goes, you know, the cool thing about this one is that there's a few things. One, I don't think people do it very often. Two, it's it's really moldable. Like you could pretty easily make it your you're, own. You're wrong. Yeah. Um, and the coaches and, love that. The coaches love yeah. when singers make the song, the, the other songs their own. Yeah, and so I, I was like thinking about the different songs I wanted to do and I, and I narrowed them down to like my top three and she goes you know what's cool about this one though because it made it to my top three and she was like you can kind of infuse she's like okay look at your other look at the other two that's on your on your top three you could kind of take some of that funky gritty edge from like a Michael Jackson type vocal that you've got going on in like blame it on the boogie and, but then you could also kind of take this guitar thing from like an Incubus or John Mayer or Red Hot mm. Chili Peppers or some type of thing like that. You could kind of take that edge in there and why don't you just like, it's almost like you're auditioning with those three songs together, but it's really, it's like really your energy that's, that's kind of gluing them together and, and could fuse them perfectly. So we're sitting there having this kind of everything gets philosophical with us <laughs> it's very heady with us really fast so that was kind of the thought behind the way we did that one and honestly the more creatively uh, I am involved uh, behind the scenes in something the better my execution will be mm -hmm. makes sense that makes sense all right so you picked Nick Jonas to be your mentor and your coach. Um, yeah. You really, I mean, honestly, you, people can't go wrong with any of those judges. I mean, they're all just unbelievably talented. Um, what was it, though, about about Nick that made you pick him? Yeah. Um, for a second, I wanted to be cheeky and just say, it was just the fact that Kelly didn't turn around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dang it, Kelly! No, it's all good. Um, all four of them are absolutely phenomenal at what they do, and like you said, you really can't go wrong because um, you you are learning from uh, people who have uh, millions of 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 fans and followers, and 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 not just those numbers. Because like numbers are shallow by themselves, but they're numbers for a reason. It's because they are so damn good at what they do right exactly um so you know blake uh, nick and john and even kelly all had really lovely things to say uh that was very touching to me um but <laughs> it, it went from you know blake acknowledging that i he's you know he was like wow, you're about to have your moment in the music industry. And honestly, like, it's pretty dope timing that he said that because I am actually going to be dropping music basically as soon as the show is over. And, yeah, that's great. Um, I'm really excited about that. Um, and then John said something uh, as a call back to Blake. It kind of ended up working in Nick's favor because if it hadn't been for Blake and John, I might not have picked him. Hmm. Blake says you must play other instruments and I go yeah so I list off some instruments that I play and then John goes oh so what do we have here like a modern female prince and then I was like it's funny you say that because uh, four-ish years ago I was in a prince tribute band <laughs> wow guitar player and then we did the whole like we did the whole gag like hair makeup everything um, That's cool. And I learned it all about like Sheila E and Prince and mm -hmm. his various band members and the Doctor and playing keys and like I learned all of it. Um, I learned that Prince was five two and that's why he wore heels, but he was also like leaning into the androgyny and yeah. So it was really it was really a cool experience. Um, uh, but then even cooler, uh, a couple of years ago in Minneapolis. 
I went to this uh, music venue slash bar called uh, Bunkers, and that's actually kind of a hole in the wall that Prince loved playing at all the time. Cool. And who was there? Uh, none other than Margie Cox singing, Michael Bland, wow. uh, Sonny Thompson, his drummer and bass player from the Power Generation, um, and uh, uh, Billy. It was Billy Franzi's birthday. He's a guitar player that knew Prince and was everybody from that era uh, knows about. It's his 70th birthday, so they're having this party. Um, somebody introduces me to them and says, hey, actually check it out. Rain can play guitar and write songs and stuff. And Billy's really like, he's just like, you know what, man? Like, I've had my run. I'm just hanging now. It's my birthday. I'm feeling good. Rain, do you want to, like, come sit in on a song with us? And I was like, oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so he hands me this guitar and says, no sweat, but this exact guitar Prince has probably played like a hundred times Jeez. and I was like and I was like okay cool thanks dude yeah <laughs> and uh I hop up there on the stage with these amazing players who've made all kinds of hits and I uh I get on the I have video evidence of all this too cool well, I, <laughs> I believe play, I play with them and uh it's this magical moment and then I'm just like, so, like, there were people in the audience that were just, like, screaming when they were like, Rain, take a solo! It just felt, like, so, so dope. And I'm just, like, super humbled. I shake their hands, and I'm like, thank you. Uh, means a lot. I'll never forget this night. And it was a really cool night. I had a friend and my brother with me, and just, like, I'll never forget it. But Sunny, uh, and, rather... Sonny say, says to me, he goes, hey, Ray. And I turn around, and I'm like, yes, Sonny T. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, you got a business card? I heard you write songs. And I was like, um, yeah. <laughs> um, here's my last one in my wallet. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I had my email on it, so I get an email a couple days later from Michael Bland saying, hey, send me some demos. And they were like, yeah, these are super cool. Like, you definitely have something going for you. They even offered to record them with me, but... Um, and I know I sound crazy, but I just was like, I'm not ready to, to do that right now. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to do me for a little bit and, like, maybe revisit this relationship in the future. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and I don't regret that decision. I think it was the right decision for me, but... Basically, I, I didn't say all of that that I just said to you, but I did say, hey, I actually jammed with them back in Minneapolis a couple of years ago. Super cool experience. And Nick goes, yo, I actually recorded an album with them and it changed my life. Like, they made me a better musician. You should totally be on my team. So I'm like, oh my God, dude, now I have this amazing compliment from Blake and John, if it wasn't for John, like I wouldn't have said that and then you wouldn't know that but now I have this connection to Nick and he's like I'm also a musician mm -hmm. and I'm like I know John's also a musician he plays you know piano like every single one of them can play something but uh it was just really it was a really tough decision and I feel like I just kind of freaked out and picked a name <laughs> <laughs> but Nick is but but I will say of the four of them I think Kelly and Nick are a bit more my songwriting lane, mm -hmm. but when you hear my stuff, when I drop it, like it is really, really different than all of them. But if I had to pick somebody that I was the most like, it probably would be Nick. So I guess that's kind of, that was another incentive. Yeah, cool. That's a great story too. I'm glad you shared me, shared with me um, about your Minneapolis. And sorry, I, I'm... I'm speaking a lot. It's like no, this is great. I love it. I enjoy. I, I really enjoy speaking with uh, the voice singers because it's it's the backstories are always cool. So I really enjoy that. Um, yeah. No no apology needed. All right. So um, one more thing, and I'll let you go. And but before I do that, I'll let you tell everybody where they can follow you on your social media and stuff. Um, so what's some advice that you could share with someone who's thinking about trying out for for a future season of The Voice? Yeah, um, this is kind of 
uh, a little bit of what I started to say earlier, which is uh, take care of yourself. Your health needs to be number one. And I think as singers, it's important to remember that, you know, you can get a hundred different guitars or whatever in your lifetime, but this body is your vessel and is your instrument. And, you know, eat well, sleep well, hydrate, like that's just important for anybody, but especially if you're going to be a singer and if you're going to be at the top of your game. And, um, and I think the other piece of advice I would give is try to figure out what you actually want to do with your life in, in, you know, for the whole thing of it, you know, like 10, 15, 20 years down the road. And, and you might be asking like, well, why does that matter when it comes to the voice? It's like, when you come out onto that stage and you have this, this national audience of attention, you're going to want to know what it is that you're trying to say or what it is that you're trying to add uh, to the world. And, and, and I think that it's important to know who you are when you go ahead and do something like that so that you don't just get swept up in, mm. you know, other people's criticisms or other people's fanaticism because you are going to get so heavily praised and you are going to be so heavily criticized. Um, and you have to be ready for something like that. You have to be know yourself and be strong enough to be able to handle something like that because it's not uh, it's not uh, what is it the what is it, like something uh, it's not for the weak hearted or weak minded or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, and it, it definitely will challenge you. Anything like this uh, going all the way like this will challenge you and make you look at yourself and, and your um, your goals and intentions. So it might not be what anybody is expecting, but that's my advice. Take care of your body, take care of your mind, and like know who you are. And that's just good advice for anything, but I really think that it, it um, is something I would apply to this situation uh, very seriously as well. Yeah, that's great advice. All right, yeah. so um, I definitely want you to come back on my show later on during you know during the season, even after the voice when yeah. you when you start dropping your own stuff, we'll get you back yeah, on as well. Um, so first and foremost, I really enjoyed talking to you. You're really you're a really neat person, extremely talented. I really enjoyed your blind your blind audition. Um, so I wish you the best of luck going forward. So before I let you go, though, tell everybody out there that's listening where they can follow you on your social media. You, you can plug your website if you want to. The mic is yours. Yeah. So thank you so much, Brad, for having me. Yep. And thank you to everyone who's been listening and supporting. My name is Rain Stern. Uh, Rain with an E on the end, R-A-I-N-E. Um, I, you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, uh, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, all of the socials. Uh, I've got that. I've got that name locked and loaded <laughs> on my end. So uh, if you're looking for me, you can even just Google me, um, and uh, we'll we'll definitely be seeing more of each other. 